Okay, so the first thing is you need to charge the battery. Now nothing could be simpler, it's very straightforward. You just plug the charger into the wall, you take your battery and you connect it. Simple as that. And you'll see there's a flashing green light there. Now when the battery is charged, it will stop flashing, it'll be a solid green light. So first thing you do, get the camera out of the box, plug the battery charger in, charge this and then we'll move on to the next thing. So once your battery is charged, like I showed before, just put it on the back of the camera and push it into place. You'll know when it's in place because it can't come off. And if you do need to take it off, you press the button on the back of the camera, which says B-A-T-T, short for battery. Press the button and the battery comes off, as simple as that. Okay, so switch on the camera, which is as simple as turning the switch, which is on the right at the back of the camera, and putting it to standby. It's just one switch forward and the camera is now on. And you can see that we've got a red light on the back which says that the camera is ready to go. Okay, so we now need to choose the standard. You're going to shoot 19, 20, 10, 80 or 12, 80, 7, 20. I shoot 12, 80, 7, 20. I find that a great format. It works for me. It's suitable for the jobs. The other thing to point out is 1280 720 scales really well up to 1920 1080. So don't think for a minute that if you shoot 1280 720, you're not going to be able to use it at full HD. You certainly can. It's just that you've got a small picture which you're working with from the source from when it was recorded. But it still looks really good. Okay, so we need to set the format. So press the menu button, just press it once and you'll see that you get various menus on the screen. Camera process, file format, system select, record mode. Using the knob on the left of the screen, scroll down to file format. Okay, press the knob in and that selects file format and you can see there are two options. QuickTime file format or MP4 file format. Now for those of us that are working with Final Cut Pro, we use QuickTime. QuickTime's an Apple technology. It's what makes video on the Mac possible. And if you're going to be working and editing in Final Cut Pro, well, you can't do better than shoot into QuickTime because this lets you edit straight away, which is one of the reasons why they've called it the Final Cut Pro Ready Camera, designed to work with Final Cut. But if you're using another editing system, that's okay, because we've got another standard here, which is MP4. Now MP4 is what some of the other editing systems out there use. So just to reiterate, if you're going to be recording and intending to edit on Final Cut Pro, choose QuickTime file format. If you're going to be working on another editing system, just have a look at what the requirements are. Many of them will use MP4. Now, beyond that, you need to scroll down one more. Choose System Select and press the button in on the left of the screen. Now you'll see we've got a bunch of different standards there. Now this is what I was talking about, shooting 19, 20, 10, 80, or 12, 80, 7, 20. Now you can see we've got 10, 80, 60, 7, 20, 60, 10, 80, 50, or 7, 20, 50. And we can even scroll down further, 10, 80, 24, 7, 20, 24. Just remember, 10, 80, is referring to a 1920 by 1080 image size. 720 is referring to a 1280 by 720 image size. Now, why 24 frames a second? For those that want to emulate the film look, they like to shoot at 24 frames a second because that's the traditional speed that film was shot at. So that's been built into this camera. You can shoot at 24 frames a second, what they often call 24p. Now don't get lost in the numbers, it really is quite simple. If you live in the USA, or if you live in Canada, or if you live in Japan, or any of the NTSC countries, what you're going to do is you're going to want to shoot at 1080 or 72030, which is actually 2997, they just rounded it to 30 frames a second. The alternative to that would be to shoot at 24 frames a second, which is actually 2398. So again, they've rounded the numbers. If you live in a PAL part of the world, which means the UK, pretty much most of Europe, Australia, many of the other countries throughout Asia, 
then you're going to be shooting at 25 frames a second. So choose your standard. I'm going to choose 720, 50, 25 because I'm in a power part of the world and I know that that's the format I need. So you choose your format, you press in the button to the left of the screen and you have now chosen your format. And you can see it says 1280, 720, 50p HQ for high quality, which shows me that's the standard I'm recording to. But setting the standard is a dual pronged situation. You've got to do two things. Number one, what we just did, press the menu button, scroll down to system select and choose whether you're shooting 1080 or 720 and whether you're doing this at 60 or 50 or 24. Beyond that, you need to press menu again and then go back into the menus and scroll down to record mode which is the one immediately below system select which is where we just were. So we choose record mode and you can see we've got quite a few options in here. I'll just run through them. You can shoot at 1280 50p which means 1280 that's a 720 format like I was saying before at 50p 50 frames a second. Now, it's also got HQ next to it for high quality. I happen to like to shoot at 50 frames a second. Traditional production was 24 or 25 frames a second. But if you shoot 50, you've got a lot more information that you're recording. You're effectively doubling your frame rate. Now, that can be useful for a lot of things. Number one, the actual image motion is more fluid at 50 frames a second than it is at 25 frames a second. Beyond that, if you want to do really good slow motion, if you've got 50 frames a second, then you'll be able to do it. If you've been shooting at 25 frames a second, you're more limited. If you choose 1280 50p, SP, that's standard play, which means your quality is going to be slightly less. It actually reduces the bit rate of the recording, so not as much information is going onto the card. You can also shoot at 1280, 25HQ high quality. That means you're shooting 25 frames a second at full quality. If you choose the SP mode, standard play, that means you're going to be shooting at 25 megabits a second. So 35 to 25 megabits a second. You'll actually get more recording on your cards, but you'll get slightly less quality. So if I click on 1280, 50p, I've now selected that format. Now what you've got to be aware of is the options that you're offered when you choose the record mode will depend on the system that you actually selected. So if I go back to system select and I choose 72060 which is what I would use in an NTSC part of the world and if I select that you'll see it says reboot system change which means the camera is actually going into that mode. So when it comes back to life we'll see it now tells me that I'm shooting at 1280, 720, 60 HQ for high quality. If I press the menu button again and go down to record mode, you can see that we've now got 1280, 60p at high quality, 1280, 60p at standard play, or 1280, 30p at high quality, or 1280, 30p at standard play. So, effectively, you get different options according to which standard you're going to be shooting meaning whether you're going to be in a PAL part of the world or an NTSC part of the world. Just keep in mind this camera is incredibly versatile. It shoots a ton of different formats. But the ones you've got to really keep your head around, what you've got to be aware of, is 1280-720 or 1920-1080. You choose that first. Beyond that, you then go in and you choose the format according to what you'd selected. So I said I want to choose 1280-720 and then I decide Am I going to shoot at 50 frames a second or am I going to shoot at 25 frames a second? Am I going to shoot high quality or am I going to shoot standard quality? Mm -hmm.